Asumasya. Welcome to The Dragon Diaries, a podcast for spiritually advanced children and young adults who would like support as they navigate interdimensional reality and create an extraordinary life here on planet Earth. We'll cover topics such as dragons, telepathy, interdimensional travel, the dream state, and most importantly, how to navigate uncomfortable emotions, energy, and relationships so that you can live your best and happiest life. My name is Zara. I'm an activator and speak primordial sound, a form of light language. I'll be your guide. We're going to hear today from the lions. They want to help you use your voice appropriately and to share their wisdom of why it is paramount to first explore peace and diplomacy before you let out a loud roar. They also want to speak about how violence and aggression has occurred within their own species and let you know that it has not benefited them. They want you to use your voice and understand how to use compassion, even if you must roar. They want to see you sing, dance, and above all, they want to see you uphold the principle of do no harm. And they want to share with you what they have learned from their failures in this regard. First and foremost, peace and compassion are the fundamental basics of our understanding about communication. Communication is to be valued and respected as a tool to ensure you and another person know where each other stands. It's important to acknowledge the right that we each have to stand where we choose. It's crucial in this world to honor this free will, even if someone chooses something that you don't agree with. If you think someone should be making a different choice, it may be appropriate to share your opinions, but it is still not your right to interfere with them or who they are being unless they are doing harm. That is when you get to stand up for your right to speak from the heart and let loose a very, very, very loud roar. Now, this roar doesn't necessarily need to be a roar like a lion, but it could be. You have free will here. The lions, though, would like to show you how to actually use the power of your voice. They want you to take your voice from the pit of your stomach, the bottom of your diaphragm, where it may sink out if you are seeing someone get harmed or something that you know is not right or maybe you're even experiencing it yourself. They want you to take that sinking feeling that means you are withdrawing from your voice, and they want you to put it into action. They want you to take that drop in your stomach and try to neutralize it on contact. Sumayana syatayana kunayana syataya. It means picking it up where it sits, in bringing it back into the throat and allowing yourself to speak freely for yourself or for others. That is something that we must get into our heads from the moment we are born onto this earth plane. The lions want you to remember that as you grow up and get older and maybe have your own family, to teach your kids to know how to love and know how to act in circumstances that could be violating their right to live a happy, harmonious life. And so the lions are here today very specifically to help you come into alignment with how and when to use that voice. Because we've already understood the basics of peaceful communication and compassionate understanding, they feel it's appropriate to teach you how to really roar, to really rumble, to really get things shaking and let someone know what you mean. But here's the thing. A roar can be a devastating thing if it's used in the wrong light. It is an energy form and can be a source of ill will or harm if it's used inappropriately. 
Someone may be mad and they can just take their voice and project this anger at another. And if it's done in a way that creates harm, it can actually unintentionally or intentionally scar and harm this person's energy field or even their physical body. That's how powerful your voice is. And so because you know this now, you know how your voice can harm and can hinder expression, and you know how you can bring it to light. You've been given great responsibility. So lions are peaceful diplomats at heart. They haven't had too much of a chance to be fully peaceful beings in this reality field because their genetic sequence brings them to eat the meat of another living being. It's how they're wired, but they actually believe in peace. And they know that it has its place, especially within the human race. They believe that humans are coming into their own and they're ready to learn how a roar can be devastating or the birth of a completely different reality. And the roars these days, they're being used to birth what some people are calling a new earth. So the lions believe that the human's ability to master their voice and use their inner roar is a very important means of communicating what it means to be alive. They want to show you how to be like a lion who is in peace and anger and victory all at once. It's an integration of a field of energy that gives you success and helps you achieve. They want to show you how to integrate your shadow as well. You can think of your shadow as the different parts of you that may still be in emotional or mental pain or the parts of you that want to be seen, but you may keep suppressed because some aspect of you judges that part of you as wrong. So the particular lion who has come forth today, his name's Ed. At least that's how he wants to be known. He wants to keep it very, very simple. Ed, short for education, he says. He wants to educate you on how to be a leader of the pack in a way that will not destroy because he has seen destruction in the lion clan. War where there should not be. He's also seen an abundance of peace and prosperity. He knows what it means to be alive because he has chosen a different way than most of his lion friends. Most of them are still causing destruction when it actually doesn't serve them. Outside of the means of gathering food, they are still killing purely for seeking revenge. It's not happening a lot, but it still does exist. And he's over this mentality. He's here to evolve. He's here to lead his species back into the knowledge of the one, where we take care of each other. We do what we need for survival, but we're here for thrival. And so he's here to show you a humble, gracious, effective roar. So Ed's message is use it or lose it. You are going to encounter times in your life where you cannot just sit down and take a back seat. If you are witnessing something unjust, something that needs to stop, and you were the one that is witnessing this, You have the right and the ability to choose to intervene with your words. Your intervention may come out as a weak kitten purr at first. If this is the case, all you do is practice and you strengthen your right to use your strong and mighty king of the jungle roar. 
It is a no or a stop that will get attention. When someone is harming another or someone is harming the self, in other words, if you have a friend or a relative that is showing behaviors where they aren't taking care of themselves or they are actually hurting themselves or another, you have the ability to come in with compassion and understanding for that person and also to use a very mellow lion roar. For example, I'm not going to let you do this to yourself anymore. This cycle of violence, it ends now. This is a collective footprint on the earth right now. It's one of violence. It may not be a physical violence. It can simply be a person's desire to harm themselves with negative words, thoughts, or anger. And this lion wants you to say no more. Violence and aggression end now. He asks you to be the first to do this in your family, in your home, school, on the street, wherever you may see a need or you encounter a place that requires a firm no, practice this roar. Sugutukunayana, sumayana, siyata, siyataya. It's a very intelligently worded roar. It does not fight. It does not scream, but it is loud enough to be heard. It says what it needs to say, and it keeps balance with all of the truth. Because each person has a perspective. Each person on this planet has an identity that resonates and matches their own truth. Your perspective may be very different than their own. And all that you need to address is specifically where harm is being done. That's where you say, no, this isn't okay. I love you so much. I want to see better for yourself. Can we get you some help? As you practice, you learn how to match the inner roar with the external world. Because when the internal and the external match, that is when you get a victory. That is when your energy is balanced and when you can see clearly through the fog. So Ed the Lion's real message today is this. Match the internal heat and pressure that you may feel in the diaphragm with the external softness and kindness of a real lion. The lion's softness and kindness is still firm. It is still mighty and it is not going to let anyone cross his boundaries. But it is also containing an element of love that you may not see in many other beings here on earth. It respects the one in front of it and it gives it a warning to stop. Matching these worlds is going to change your existence because you'll be able to say no and you'll be able to mean it. You'll be able to say, yes, this is working out and no, this isn't. You'll be able to say, okay, we need to stop here, please. Let's take a break. Whether that break is from a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a parent or someone in a position of power, if conversation isn't working, it's getting heated and there's debate that's breaking out into a cycle of violence where people are talking negatively or throwing anger around, it's important to be able to stop the cycle and ask everyone to return to calm when they're ready. And then let the conversation continue. Whatever the situation is, that's not for the best of the human race or the individual, it's important to speak and to be heard. 
Ed wants you to be heard. He wants you to be heard with your compassion and your kindness, or else you perpetuate the cycle of violence that he has seen too long in his species. His species has been killing for many, 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 many years, sometimes needlessly. That's how he feels, at least. They've been bred to be king of the jungle, king of the castle, king of the lion's den. On top has been the name of the game, and he doesn't think that's appropriate anymore. He doesn't think that one ruler should lead a tribe. He thinks there needs to be consultation and community consent. He's not getting this from his species, so he's speaking to ours. He's wanting to teach you how to show up in the game and see a different outcome for the human race. He wants you to find peace and to use violence only, and he means if only, there is no other option, and it is done purely as an act of defense. This is where he advocates violence to a certain degree. Only enough, though, that diffuses the situation. He knows that if you ignite a spark and another spark and then another, there's likely to be a fire. So he doesn't believe in projecting anger, violence, and ill will. He has seen this destroy his population. The lions are a dying breed, and he sees why. They are killing each other, and because they are killing each other, they attract others who kill them as well. He's speaking of poachers, those who hunt lions for game. Ed is big on conservation. He wants to see his species succeed and survive. He doesn't want to see them extinguished. He seems the same with our species. He sees that they are decimating each other. And he's reaching out to you because you are the youth of the world. He's asking you to try a different way. He wants you to use your voice when it's appropriate to do so. And he says, use it loudly if that is what is required. But try not to destroy anyone with it anymore. It's not appropriate. Pick up the energy within and match it to the external situation. Find a way to speak first and foremost with compassion and diplomacy. And add that roar if it is required to be heard. Do not let yourself be walked all over by anyone, he says. Hold your head up high. Hold yourself to a high standard. A standard that says, I love you and I love me, so I will not let you do any more harm. When there is harm being done, that's when he wants you to use your lion or lioness roar. If anyone is getting hurt, even if it's just by negative words, you have the right and the opportunity to bring it to an end. As you end this cycle of violence, it ends within yourself, within the other that you're addressing, and that spreads out to the human race. You're teaching each other to communicate. You're teaching each other to communicate effectively. So if there is someone who is hurting, you have to understand they're just a reflection of the nature of the self. So it's important not to blame and not to judge the other. But it is important to have them stop. That's how you learn respect for yourself and for your fellow human beings. It is to not allow violence to perpetuate any longer. 
And it begins with you. Sutukunayana, Sumayana, Syataya. Ed's delivered a really important message today. In order to use our voice appropriately, it's something we must practice. We must have this ability to stand up for ourselves, and sometimes it can take a little bit of work. Know that using your voice appropriately is a work in progress for everyone on this planet. We are all learning and growing and coming to completion with cycles of violence and abandonment. When we allow violence to occur, we abandon ourselves as individuals or as a species. Many adults are going through this right now. They're learning how to end the cycle of violence within their own minds, within their own thoughts, within their own actions. And as they start to do this, they start to shift the balance of aggression on the planet so that it comes back to more peace, back to harmony. And because you are a younger generation, you have much less to resolve. And so right now, as Ed has shown us, it's time to look deep within our hearts, our souls, and speak what we mean. Speak how we feel and do our best to learn how to do it with love for all others. It's a work in progress for you and for everyone. So practice, practice, practice. In any situation that needs a light, hold it up. Take out the mirror. Bounce back the reflection to all the others in the field. And it will be heard if you do it with kindness. Even if you must speak loudly or with a bit of a roar. I would also like to say that if you are in a situation where you are experiencing or know of someone who is experiencing violence or abuse, your first port of call is to speak to a parent or a trusted adult and tell them what is going on. This is one way to roar. It is definitely not your responsibility to roar alone. In fact, it is most likely not safe to do so. I'm going to repeat this because it is of utmost importance. Talk to a trusted parent or adult, first and foremost, if there is an unsafe situation. Practice your roar from a safe distance. Shut the situation down by going to an adult. So allow yourself to roar and watch the freedom that you'll find when you express your voice. Sumayana Syatayana Konaya. Thank you so much for joining me on the Dragon Diaries. If you've enjoyed this space, would you please subscribe, share, follow, like, and or leave a review. Doing this will help me reach more youth like you. You can also leave questions in the YouTube comments, and I'll do my best to answer them on an upcoming show. Until next time, kasutukunayana sumayana syataya. May you live your best life yet.